Let me begin with a story. This is a Zen story of a monk from a Chinese source, but let's transpose it to a Western setting, to a Benedictine monastery near Montepulciano in Italy. There, a monk named Brother Cobinian goes to the abbot and says, Reverend Abbot, I'm alone and poor. Please show me how to be rich. The abbot, looking at him in the eye, says, Brother Cobinian. And Brother Cobinian, also looking at the abbot in the eye, says, Yes, Reverend Abbot. The abbot then says, There, you've already drunk three of the finest cups of wine of Montepulciano, and yet you still say you're thirsty. End of story. Well, what's this all about? And what does this have to do with Good Friday? Let's look at the background. Brother Corbinian may have been someone from a noble family in Italy who, feeling a monastic vocation, sells all his property and his inheritance, gives up his social status, and enters the Benedictine monastery where he vows poverty, celibacy, and obedience for life. Or he could have been a merchant or a beggar before he entered. No matter what his social status was, he gave it all up, and now he has taken up a life seeking the pearl of great price, the treasure of the universe that, once you have it, you will be rich not just for this lifetime, but for all eternity. That's the background. So he comes to the abbot and asks, Sir, I am alone and poor. Help me find my treasure. Alone and poor. This is our cue. Let's start with that. We are now living in challenging times, an age of contagion, and it's sweeping all across the face of the earth. People are getting sick. People are dying. It could be you. It could be me. Anytime. As we face this stark possibility of death, what are we still clinging to? Is it my house? Is it my car? My social status? My reputation? My so-called power over others in my workplace or in my organization? Whatever bolsters my self-identity in the midst of all these threats? These are all being stripped away from us and eventually will be. We will be reduced to dust and ashes. At this point, we are all publicly mandated to social distancing. All over the world, people are taking precautions not to get infected by one another. And this is making us feel isolated. We are limited in our movements. Many of our conventional routines have been swept aside. Many of us have lost jobs. Many are hungry. Many are beginning to panic, not knowing what will happen, whether we can continue to pay the rent, whether we'll be able to procure food for our children, whether we will get sick or even die. This is a trying time when we feel like Brother Corbinian, alone and poor. What is it that we seek? What is that treasure in our hearts that we are longing for? Or asking the question another way, what are the so-called treasures that we are still clinging to in the face of all this? And as we see through them, realize their, pa their paltriness. But what is that true treasure that will never be taken away from me? As all these things are happening to us, we are commemorating Holy Week. For the Jewish community, it's the week of Pesach, or Passover, the commemoration of their transition from the slavery of Egypt toward entry into the Promised Land. For Christians, it's the commemoration of the passion and death of Jesus, which brought about the salvific message of eternal life in Easter, the resurrection. 
Today, as I speak, it is Good Friday, the day when Jesus was put to death on the cross. Let us take a look at how this is described in the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark is distinctive in that it highlights and emphasizes the stark humanity of Jesus. So, this is how it goes. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. A Roman centurion who stood there seeing Jesus saw how he died and said, Surely this is the Son of God. Let's look at this closely. Three points. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus breathed his last. Surely, this is the Son of God. Have you ever been through times in your life when that was the only cry that you could mutter? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Losing a job, losing a loved one, being ill, in danger of dying when all the certainties of your life are being taken away from you, when you felt you were being reduced to nothing and you could only cry out, why have you forsaken me? Recall those times now. Be there now and let yourself again right now be stripped of all that you have, all that you treasure and just be reduced to that nothing alone and poor, breathing in, breathing out. And Jesus breathed his last. Just be there with each breath as if it were your last. Surely this is the Son of God. Allow me to share something very personal. There was a time when that cry was the all that I could muster in my own life. It was that transition time when some major cataclysms were happening in my life and that led me to ask to leave the Jesuits. I had been in Japan for about 20 years serving as a priest and I told my superior of my decision and he listened and he told me, Sorry to know that, but okay, you may go and pack your things. You will have to leave your position at the university and you will no longer have a visa to stay in Japan. I had come to love Japan and its people and my work there, teaching, giving retreats, guiding students. And now I had to leave all that. My reputation, all that I thought I had built up all those years about to collapse right in front of my eyes. It was as if the world had come crashing in on me and everything became just total darkness. It was in those moments when I just opened, opened my eyes and tried to muster whatever movement I could. I went out through the door of my room then went out through the gate of the Jesuit house that I was staying and then went to the courtyard. I looked up, I saw trees, I saw the sky, I saw clouds, I saw people walking about, I felt the ground from under me and stepped one step at a time. Just that, just this. As everything collapsed in front of me, it was all just this, just that, each moment. And then suddenly the darkness turned into a bright and luminous light. 
and everything shone in that brightness, nothing else. And the heaviness in my heart turned to lightness, lighter than a feather, and everything partook in that lightness. Justice, justice. That was a moment beyond time and space. I was at peace. More than that, I was filled with joy. And things just naturally unfolded from here on, from that point on. Now back to Brother Corvinian. I am alone and poor, Reverend Abbott. Show me how to be rich. Just that. The Abbott said, Brother Corvinian. Just that. Yes, Reverend Abbott. Just that. Now where are those three cups of wine that the Abbott is talking about? By the way, there is a wine called Monte Pulciano. Try that sometime. The riches we seek from the bottom of our hearts. Where is that? Right there, in our midst, each moment. Taste and see. Easter is now. <laughs>